Thank you. Uh, okay, so uh, my talk's going to be about um, sort of caching HTML pages from uh, Ember CLI apps. And the reason why I got onto this was because we had a client who wanted cool sharing buttons on their Ember CLI project. And I didn't know much about cool share buttons or social media at all, really. So this is kind of like a, a sort of like a meandering talk about my experiences <coughs> with trying to get the cool share buttons. Um, so, oh yeah, me, I suppose I should talk about me. That's me. I work here. I think that would, that'll do. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Richard uh, gave a good talk last month about Ember CLI add-ons, so I thought I'd give it a crack. And I made this Ember CLI add-on which basically injects social media tags into the head of your Ember CLI app. That seemed like a good first like starting point to, to do this. So uh, yeah, if you put um, a Facebook app ID um, attribute in your environment um, object, then um, you, you obviously you install the the uh, Ember CLI social media tags um, add-on, and then it'll expose a service called Meta Tags, which you can just populate which you can just use to populate um, uh, meta tags in your, in your head. So they'll look like this. Cool, so I've got open graph tags, that's great. And I've got Twitter tags, that's brilliant. Um, but I need, I need some way of like um, scraping these. So, so I started looking at Phantom and Casper. Um, my first look into Phantom um, led to a lot of memory leaks, and that was yeah. fun. <laughs> um, and then, so then I looked into Casper, which runs on top of Phantom, and it's kind of nice. It's got some nice um, extra features. One of them is you can actually quickly grab stuff from the, the CLI there, so you can run it on the command line, and you can just pull in information, so that's cool. So then, um, I wrote the Casper script, which basically just takes uh, an array of, of URLs and just like walks through them and uh, takes a snapshot and saves them onto a disk. Great. So now I've got static HTML files. <coughs> so then I, I thought, well, it'd be quite good to have um, a sitemap. Um, for my site, that's good. So I, I wrote a service in Node, um, which would basically um, query my database and then push that into the sitemap so that I didn't have to do that myself. Uh, the other thing it's doing is it's, it's taking the, the updated at attribute from the, from the model that we've saved and putting it into the last mod in the sitemap. So we know when it was last modified. Uh, and then I just, yeah, there's some other stuff down here. So this, this method here, update, just means that I can throw it um, a record from the database and it will just um, search through the sitemap and see if it needs to be added or if it just needs to be updated with the, the last mod. And then just a little help function at the end which converts that into an array. Uh, array of objects, which is kind of nice, so I can I can use that in my app a bit easier. How do I go into the next slide once I've gone this big? I have no idea. Okay. And then and then I wrote um, and then I wrote a crawler because the thing I wanted to do was I wanted to be able to call. The, um, the Casper script from within my, ser uh, my server so that I didn't have to, to run it like every day on my own or whatever. I could just like all set up a cron. I wanted it to, to run when it was needed so I wasn't keep, keep creating new, uh, new static HTML files. So basically this one, this is just um, a sort of a basic, a basic cron job which will set up a set interval and as long as uh, the cron isn't running, and as long as it's been scheduled, 
then uh, it'll run on the hour or the half hour. And then this call function will basically just pull my site map and uh, uh, look through it and find out which, which nodes need to be, which uh, pages need to be updated. And then because I've, I can use the um, CLI command and pull out those, that information, I can just pass the pages that I want to, to update here. And then when it's finished, I can run a callback function which, which informs the server that it's finished. And we can reset those times and stuff. Whoa. So then, so then, yeah, I sort of started thinking about um, serving the static pages if the JavaScript hasn't loaded, because that's, that's obviously an issue when using a, a JavaScript framework. One thing that I found interesting was from um, the <coughs> gov.uk blog um, was that, surprisingly, most people who don't receive JavaScript do have it turned on. They just don't get it for whatever reason. Maybe the, the scripts are corrupted or, or whatever. The problem with that is then the no script tag won't actually work for most people because they will have JS turned on, but they won't get the script, which I found quite surprising. Um, so one, one, one option would be to like inject um, static HTML into pages in a NoScript tag. That's one method of sort of dealing with that issue, but it may not be the best option. Um, so yeah, so this is where I'm at. I haven't quite worked out the best way yet, but I was thinking of having um, a containing a div element on my index page that would have a link to would have links to all the static pages so I could go and serve static pages to people who don't have JavaScript. It may or may not be the best idea. I'm working on that. But I do get my cool share buttons and I do get to make um, some static files from my Ember app. There you go. That's my talk. Thanks very much. <laughs>